the NCIC formula for this given problem or given fingerprint record would be this written on the upper portion of the of the card and you can see here numerous symbols such as PO, PI, PM, DO, another DO, SR, then we have uh, PM, and we have DM, PO, and another PO. In our Henry classification formula, we have discussed there the rules on reach counting and reach tracing. Same rules apply when deriving the NCIC formula. For loop patterns, we are going to apply reach counting, and for world patterns, we are going to use reach tracing. You can see here the uh, block symbols for the following pattern. We have uh, W as shown in all fingers 1 to 10 with uh, a little issue on finger number 6 which is a finger with complete scarring. So how would we classify this pattern later on? Will it be a plane whirl or would it be equivalent to a plane arch, tented arch, radial loop or an ulnar loop for that matter? Okay, so let's uh, check on the various codes used by NCIC. Okay. So we have here the pattern on the first column and we have here it's the subgroup in the second column and we have here the respective codes for NCIC. Okay, let's start with the pattern arches. We have here two subgroups. We have plain arch and we assign a double A okay, for its NCIC code. And for tented arch, we have doubled as its representation. And of course, we have here the loop pattern. And we have two subgroups for this pattern. We have radial and we have ulnar. Now, how are we going to apply the NCIC rules for loop? Okay, I mentioned a while back that we'll be using reach counting for loop. So RC here represents reach counting. So whatever reach count was derived after looking into the intervening ridges, we are going to add an arbitrary number of 50. For example, if you were able to count 12, then you will add 50. So that would be 62. For ulnar loop, okay, so we will uh, put the coding by actual reach count. Okay, if it is less than 10, then we have to proceed with zero. For example, you have only five bridge counts, so you have to write that with zero five. If you have counted nine, so you have to write it as zero nine. Okay, let's proceed with the world family. So we have four subgroups for the world family, and we have plain world, central packet loop world, double loop world, and the accidental world. Okay, so again, for world, we are going to apply reach tracing like what we did in the Henry classification system but this time the plain world will be coded P unlike in the Henry system we code it with W okay so and then for central packet loop world we code it with C and for double for the double loop we code it with small d and for accidental we code it with X so you notice that the codes here are followed by whatever reach trace was seen uh, after the procedure of reach tracing and we still remember our rules on reach tracing. We provide definite value of I, M, and O, which stands for inner, meeting, and outer. Let's uh, have a short review of what is uh, reach tracing. Okay, tracings are applied for word. And basically, what do we do when we trace? We trace from left delta to the right delta. We always start from the left, going to the extreme right delta if there are more than two delta. Okay, number two, we have to trace from farthest left delta to a point opposite to the furthest right. Okay, drop down at the ending ridges. So if there are ending ridges, then we have to drop and go down to the next ridge. And, and if it is followed by a bifurcation, we are to choose the lower form and stop at the point opposite to the right delta okay when you reach that point near the location of the right delta you have to stop and you have to start making an imaginary line going to the location of the right delta and start the counting if there are three or more ridges inside the right delta then the tracing will be inner okay
And if there are three or more ridges outside the right delta, the tracing will be outer or O. If there are no, there are one or two ridges either inside or outside the right delta. Or if the tracing stops on the right delta itself, the tracing would be meeting. Okay, it's not necessary to count more than three ridges. Do not count delta or the tracing ridge. Okay, just count the intervening ridges. Okay, so these are the usual rules whenever we do word tracings. Now, let's uh, have some few examples here. So, you have seen this in the previous lessons when we were discussing the Henry classification formula. Okay, so we start from the left delta going to the right delta. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Okay, so that's the left delta. We have uh, to make a trace. Then we have stop at that particular area. So we are already adjacent to the right delta. So we have to draw an imaginary line. Okay, and to start counting. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so 8 uh, intervening ridges. So that's more than 3. And the ridges are above the right delta so that is an inner tracing okay so let's move on to the next example okay this is your left delta this is your right delta then since there is an abrupt ending ridge here we have to go down following the type line and as we move on uh, to the trace we have encountered a bifurcation here so as the rule says we have to follow the lower fork then stop here then we have to draw an imaginary line so you notice here that we only have one two intervening tracings so that would be above the right delta but since this is less than three then it is considered meet okay and the next example will be a true meeting we're in the tracing from the left delta to the right delta absolutely meets and of course the last example would be this uh, ridge in here okay so left delta and this is your right delta there are no ridge formation right in front of the type line so this would be our uh, right delta okay so the trace will be there and the trace went under the right delta but there are only two intervening ridges so we will still interpret this as meeting hence if there are three or more intervening ridges coming from this area then we will interpret that as out or o okay so that's basically the rules on ridge tracing here are some other examples for ridge tracing then you can find there the useful rules that we apply in ridge tracing okay so this is an example of inner trace and of course here is a typical example of ridges that are abruptly ending so we have to follow the next ridge under it until we reach the location of the right delta so in here you have counted one two three so that is an example of an outer tracing okay so in cases of short breaks which are not definitely rich endings perhaps this could be a scar a healed injury or uh, a natural skin fold referring to creases then we just ignore the gap and then proceed with the tracing okay so same here we have uh, cases we're in we have uh, bifurcations we have to follow the lower the lower reach okay so another abrupt ending ridge same uh, as we have discussed earlier we have creases in there 